Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our hymn, The Day Thou Gavest, Lord Is Ended, hymn number 24, the hymnal 1982. The day thou gavest, Lord, is ended. The darkness falls at thy behest. To thee our morning hymns ascended. Thy grace shall sanctify our rest. We thank thee that thy church unsleeping while earth rolls onward into night. Through all the world her watch is keeping and rests not for today is Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me, and delivered me out of my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good, 
Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who among you loves life and desires long life to enjoy prosperity? Keep your tongue from evil speaking and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of St. Luke in the 12th chapter, here begins the 13th verse. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to them, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he taught, thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the first reading is the Song of Mary, the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. 
Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A few years ago, Francisco and I spent some time in Athens, Greece. We chose our beautiful hotel because it had an amazing view of the Acropolis and the ruins of the Parthenon. We didn't know it then, but the Areopagus mentioned in this morning's Gospel reading is just a little way down the hill from the Parthenon. The Areopagus is actually a large rock formation. When St. Paul's story was written, people would climb to the plateau of this enormous rock to hear the defense and prosecution of all sorts of cases, homicides, woundings, property disputes, and even religious matters. The area was chosen for this because there was a legend surrounding it. The claim that the Greek god Ares had been tried there by the gods of Olympus for the murder of Poseidon's son. As Paco and I climbed up the jagged rocks, I imagined a crowd on top of the Areopagus debating the latest topics of the day before smartphones and laptops and assorted news empires and tribalized information. People enjoyed hearing from philosophers politicians, and even travelers to keep up with the world's news. Now, Paul was no John the Baptist. Instead, he spent time learning about the faith traditions of this famous city. He had been exposed to their philosophers and poets, and he complimented the people on their religious nature and looked for common ground. Perhaps Paul remembered the story of how one of Jesus' disciples had complained that he had seen someone casting out demons in Jesus' name. The disciples had tried to stop the outsider because they did not follow Jesus like they did. But Jesus said to them, Do not stop him, for whoever is not against you is for you. Paul noticed that many of the altars in Athens one was dedicated to an unknown God. He suggested to the people that what they worship unknowingly is actually the one true God, the creator of heaven and earth. God is not made of stone or precious metals and brought to life through artistry and imagination, but it is God who brings us to life and gives us breath and meaning. And it is Jesus, God's Son, who lived, died, and rose again, who will come at the end of time to judge the living and the dead. I wonder what they thought when they heard Paul speaking on that rock, when they heard about Jesus and God the Father of all. Perhaps, perhaps they were intrigued. Perhaps the craftsmen of the gods were angry at the suggestion that their creations were really not gods at all, because they could not talk or move or answer prayer. Perhaps some were simply uninterested. They had other things on their mind. Nonetheless, some must have listened. Seeds were planted, and faith began to take hold in the hearts and minds of the people of Athens and later of all of Greece. In today's gospel reading, Jesus teaches us to love him is to obey his commandments. Jesus teaches that it is love that guides us. It is God's love in us that empowers us. And God is revealed in that love. Because God loves us, we know what true love is like. In the next chapter, after this morning's gospel, we will hear, no one has greater love than this, to lay one's life down for one's friends. How amazing it is 
to be called God's friends, for that is what we are. Because Jesus gave his life for us, we are loved with an unimaginable love. It's God's love that pursues us. His grace surrounds us on all sides. If we can just open our eyes a little wider, we will see that God is with us, even now. In St. Peter's letter, he recognizes that all people, even Christians, suffer from time to time. Life can be difficult. Life can be brutal. Jesus recognizes also that sometimes bad things happen to God's good people, in fact, to any good person. You may ask, where is God in all of humankind's problems? Peter tells us that God inhabits the heart, our good deeds, even our gentleness, our kindness, and our respect for all. God is present in our hopes and in our faith and in our trust. In his spirit we are made alive and gifted what we need for each situation at hand. God's spirit makes Jesus present to us. No matter what may come, Jesus is with us. Emmanuel. So where is God? God is here. God is present. His grace is sufficient for all things and for all times. And we are safe in God's hands because we are his friends. We belong to him. Praise God. Amen. Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord that there may be peace to your whole church and to the world, we entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, we entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Martha of Bethany, and all your saints, and trusting one another and all our life to Christ, we entreat you, O Lord. The Collect for the Sixth Sunday of Easter. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you. 
that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A Collect for Sundays. Lord God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, triumphed over the powers of death and prepared for us a place in the new Jerusalem, grant that we, who have this day given thanks for his resurrection, may praise you in that city of which he is the light, and where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, and shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. We pray for all clergy, bishops, priests, and deacons, especially for John and Diane, our bishops, Michael, our presiding bishop and primate, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Bartholomew, Patriarch of the East, Francis, Bishop of Rome, for Steve, Judy, Bill, and Jean, our priests, and for all who serve God in his church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those serving in the armed forces, for Father Aristotle, Joshua, Julian, Nick, Joseph, Alexandra, Hayden, Keith, Marco, Mario, Edward, David, Manuel, Brian, Chris, Joe, Robert, and Derek. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the world. We pray for Donald, our president, Gavin, our governor, for Victor and Tony, our mayors, for all those in authority, for first responders, medical professionals, and essential workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those suffering from the coronavirus and for those in quarantine, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for God's healing, strength, and comfort for Steve and Margarita, for Gabriella, Anne, Sharon, Ruth, Savannah, Robert, Linda, Anthony, Chelsea and Anthony, Gordy and Kelly, Marianne, Chris, Edwina, Jay, Dennis, Ursula, Christine, Tammy, Ruth and Keith, Diego, Renee, Claudia, John, Pat, Leopoldo, Michelle, Dulce, Ron, Pam, Caesar, Ron, Philip, Pedro, Milt, Ray, Robert and Gretchen, Margaret, Zoila, Dorothy, Guadalupe, Dorothy, and Roberta. Are there others? We pray for all children, for teachers and online learning, for our youth, young adults, parents, teachers, and administrators. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all birthdays, especially for Teresa, Camille, and Phil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, this day we pray for the Anglican Church of Kenya. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This day we pray for all those who have died. We pray for our friend Ruth, Bertha, Maria Elena, Alan, Dr. Rona, Patty, Bill, George, David, Robert, and Paul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
we say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness, loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And now, upon the closing of this service, I dedicate this service to our dear friend Ruth, who recently passed away at the Masonic Homes of Covina. May she rest in peace, and may light perpetual shine upon her. Goodbye and God bless till we meet again.